thing that you don't need. There's a reason for that. This is a sign. This good weather, thanks to our good, our great friend, Poxitani Phil, if you didn't know, on the Groundhog Day, told us that we we're going to have an early spring. Yes! And I don't know if you care or not, but some of our brethren are struggling in sub-zero temperatures north of the Mason-Dixon line. It sucks to be them. Right. So I'm thrilled to see you all here today. Thanks for coming on a super Saturday to get this show rolling. I would really like to ask everyone to step up here. If I can get this up. If you would stand and join my lovely wife, Nancy. We'll do the Pledge of Allegiance. We're going to sing the national anthem together. And then Gary Gunn is going to give us some higher guidance. All right, let's do the Pledge of Allegiance first. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, the reason we're doing this all together is because I've been sick with the flu and I don't have my whole voice back. So we're all going to sing together, okay? So he retired, and 
Our new chairman stepped up out of nowhere because he was standing in the ranks as a board member for over 10 years and was hoping that he wouldn't get called to action, but uh, he did. And he stepped up as an honest broker to come help run the organization as the new chairman of the board. I'd like to introduce you to, if you haven't already met it, a dear friend, a close compadre, a mentor, and a, and a teammate all the way along, Mr. Don, Mr. Harley Richards. Come on up, Harley. So, uh, with record low temperatures up in uh, Illinois and Wisconsin, Minnesota, I'm sure the volunteers who are from up in that area are happy to be here. We're in short sleeves. <laughs> I guess as chairman of the board, I'm expected to get up here and, and kind of be the token guy and say a few words and invite all you guys here, so I'll get that out of the way. Uh, on behalf of the board, I do want to thank and invite all the volunteers, the FAA, and more importantly, all of the Sun and Fun staff, approximately 30 of them, who work tirelessly, probably at least six months out of the year. <laughs> <laughs> six months to pull this thing off, if not more. And thank you to all you Sun and Fun people. I appreciate it. I'm not going to go through naming everybody individually. There's so many of them that uh, it's, it's incredible. But uh, you know, the board is supposed to provide oversight for Lean House, and of course, that's an impossible job. I mean, he's about two links out in front of everybody all the time. I told him last week he needed a chain on his neck. But, uh, you know, I mean, lights came in here, what, 10 years ago? Seven. Seven. <laughs> and, you know, he joined a team that already had been in existence. I mean, Laura's been running this event for how long? So, you know, the Sun and Fun team taught Lean Outs how to do this, really. But uh, in all fairness to them, they do a wonderful job. It's incredible. Uh, as all of you know, this is the 45th anniversary, 45th birthday of Sun and Fun. And we need to all work together this year to make this a safe and memorable event. So, thank you to every one of you. If there's anything that any of us on the board can do, you know, if Lean House is giving you a hard time, I don't have much pull, but I know Nancy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if, if Lean House is giving you a hard time, contact me. I know Garcia can get to him a little bit. Maybe Bob Baby, Nancy, what have you. Uh, get with us if we can help you. There are a few of us here, uh, board members who are here. Why don't y'all stand up for just a second? There are a few here. Now, White says he's going to wrap this meeting up in one hour, or so I just started my stopwatch. All right, thanks, Harley. There's been a few changes, uh, all for the better. We've got great new employees that have uh, a few swapped out, moved on. Uh, different, life, different lifestyles require them to keep moving, and we added a few folks to it. So I would like them to introduce to y'all who they are and what they do so that you can start realizing who is on the staff to help you get your job done, because I know you need all the help you can get. So we're going to start right now with Tracy Neal, the Chief Financial Officer. We're going to roll right through that. Come on up, Tracy. Good morning, I'm Tracy Neal, the CFO. During the flying, you Marketing off. Awesome. <laughs> He's serious. <laughs> I'm Ed Young, and I'm the Executive Director of ACE, and I feel like I've worked six months in the two months I've been here. Stand up, Ed. That won't change it. Uh, Laura Vaughn, and I've been here a very long time 
Miss Harley was getting ready to say, I think this is my 27th fly-in, but um, anyway, welcome, and I, you all know me. <laughs> The glue that holds us together. I'm Susan Hiley. I'm the merchandise manager for the uh, Gifts of Flight in the museum. My job is to be sure that the, the shop runs well during the flight. Hey, I'm TV Schneider. You probably can't see me very well. <laughs> Stand to the side. I'm Briggs, administrator, executive assistant, and I take care of the sponsor and, and perform the logistics for the flight. Good morning, I'm Jamie Jameson. I'm the manager of Aerospace Discovery at the Florida Air Museum, and that's where I am for the fly-in. I'm Robin McFarlane, your volunteer director, and I try to take care of all My name's Matt Anderson. I am an advanced logistics assistant, and I'm also responsible for chants and golf carts during the fly -in. Take a real good look at this space, guys and gals. This is your tent, table, chairs, and golf carts. All right? If he doesn't approve it, it don't happen. He's your man for every one. And I'm Holly Parrish, and I'm the director of philanthropic programs. And for the fly-in, I chair the Ace Ambassador Flight Deck area next to the 927 Club. Hello, I'm Melanie Ayers, I'm the new business development manager, and I make sure that all of the sponsors have everything that they need, so they keep coming back year after year. Hi, I'm Bonnie Perkins, I'm the exhibit manager, and this is my 45th fly-in, and I am the Canaan Spider Driver. Uh, 
Hey, good morning. I'm Mike C., uh, president of Lakeland Aero Club. First of all, thank you all for everything you do out here. We couldn't do it without you. Uh, during the fly-in, you'll be able to find me in that little building that's on your way to the Paradise City. Hi, my name is Andy Nobbins. <laughs> Aircraft and maintenance repair, is that where I'm at? <laughs> Tim Wells, site director, which means I direct the site. And Lights wants to be like me when he grows up. chance to meet them and become more acquainted with them uh, as the weeks go on. Please take full advantage of uh, our great staff. As you see, we have a wonderful time and we're here to help you get do what you want to do and get it done right, okay? So don't hesitate to ask for help. All right, jumping right ahead here. Three simple words. Three simple words. This is the philosophy. This will help all of us to keep this in the forefront of our minds as we go through our planning and preparation and then execution of the 45th Annual Sun and Fun Flying. It's really simple. What does it say to you? Professionalism. We talked about this a little bit. Let's just make sure we all understand it. It's doing what's right every time. It's following the procedures and the processes and making sure when you see something that's starting to go south, you stop it before it goes into a show, a show stopper. Make it a show experience, not a stopper. So. Think about all the things you do before you do it, and don't let anybody get hurt. We'll have a safe and wonderful experience. Positive. That's why I wear this button. That's a positive attitude. How can I help? We want to have fun. If you're having fun, you're happy, you're positive, that energy spreads to everybody around you, and that includes our guests. Let's make our guests feel so welcome that they don't want to leave, and they want to plan this year to be back next year. That's that Southern hospitality. We want to be the very best aviation experience south of Chicago. EAA and Oshkosh is our best friends, and we want that to be the mecca for everybody. But when it comes to putting the most friendly, fun, enjoyable flight experience we can put together, we want to be that people. So let's get that attitude positive. Don't look at the negative. Don't worry about what happened yesterday. There's an old saying, don't let yesterday consume today. Think about what you're going to do today, have fun, enjoy it, and then help everybody else be positive. And lastly, but not leastly, this is the one that's so tough sometimes. I know it's a long, arduous six, seven, eight days, but let's be productive. Let's get her done. When you see something needs to be done, don't wait for somebody else to do it. Jump in there and get it done. And then let's enjoy the fruits of our labor on that tail dragger and, what, and brag about how great a show it was. But that only happens if you, as chairman, set the tone of being professional, positive, and get her done group. Then everything comes together. Now I'd be remiss, stop right there, I'd be remiss if I didn't recognize another part of our team, and that would be our friends from the Federal Aviation Administration. I think I saw Kieran back there, Steve and Bob. Yes, they're all here, thank you very much. And, and Jennifer as well is right there, thank you very much. And Big Al. So we really do appreciate y'all coming and being a part of this team. Now, I'd like to invite the most important component of our staff. We don't pay him, but the guy is part of our team and he makes things happen. He's our teammate in all things aviation. Gene Conrad, as I've said so often, my brother from another mother, sidekick in crime, mentor sometimes, and a really wonderful man. Because now, he's grounded, he's married. Thank you, Lights. I appreciate that. Well, I will say one week from today I'm going to Bora Bora, so if I don't make it back, I'm working at the airport there. So there you go. <laughs> all right, thank you. Well, first of all, I just want to welcome everybody back. Um, there's a lot of that going on here at the airport, um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about that today. But before I get started, I just want to recognize real quick my team um, back here over to your, to your right, or your right shoulder. If everybody could wave, wave their hand over there. They do a phenomenal job. I'm 
personal job for this airport on a year-round basis, but they also work diligently and care passionately about this event and what occurs here every single year. So I just wanted to thank them real quick. I will tell you, this is actually my 10th son and fun, so I've made it. This is number 10. I'm still here. Don't run me off yet. So but I know there's some, I, I want to say there is some anxiety out there, I know, because a lot of things are changing here at the airport, but I want you to know, and you got to hear it from me, we are, I'm super passionate about this, I know most of you know, but I was born in Oshkosh, I just want to reiterate that, my dad ran the airport there when I was a kid, so as things are changing and growing here, I just want you all to please to understand that we do have this event and this organization and what you guys do on a year-round basis, and especially during the fly-in, first and foremost in our thoughts as we're going through our planning and what we're doing here for this facility. There's a lot we can do, but this is the mainstay of what we do here, and I just want you all to hear that from me and understand that and know that. And if there are questions, or if you guys just want to meet with me, or you've got great ideas, you know, I'm always available, I'm always around. Hopefully you guys see me. I do hide in my office quite a bit because we've been quite busy. But if you see me, grab me, I'm happy to talk. Um, but I just, again, want to reiterate and want you all to know, we care passionately, we care deeply, and you guys are very, very important to what we do here in our success for aviation. And also, I just want to say one more thing, because I got the soapbox, I'm up on my soapbox right now. What we do here, and what you all do here, and all the educational efforts and everything that's going on, every time I talk to a politico or I'm talking to groups, what is happening here isn't happening anywhere else in this country. And it is important for the sustainability of our airport, for aviation as a whole, what you guys do, you're at the forefront. I will say this, and someone can, you can record me or write it down, whatever you want, but you guys are kicking the tail off the of EAA and AOPA and all the alphabet groups about what you guys are doing here, and it is important for you to know that and know that we care and know what you're doing, so thank you very much. So real quick, like I said, I didn't have very much time, and he called me the other night and gave me grief because there were so many slides, but I told him I would, we'd go through this quickly. Um, I just want to talk about our activity levels. So when I got here in 2010, we did about 64,000 operations a year. This past year, in 2018, we did 128,000 operations here at this airport. What does that mean? There's 520 control, air traffic control towers in the United States. We're about the 112th busiest. I think St. Pete's just a little ahead of us. I don't know where Russ is. We beat him last year, but they're just a little ahead of us. Um, but we're very, very busy on a year-round basis. Real quick, talking about our master plan. So I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about this. So we're going through our 20-year plan right now for the airport and how we're going to develop this facility and where we're going to put hangers and things like that. Um, I want to tell you again, this event and what you guys do and where airplanes are going to be parked out there in the field, we are paying attention to all those things and we're working with our partners at Sun Club, obviously to make sure that we're going to maintain the integrity of what's going on here. Things will shift over time but we're planning for the future to make sure this event is viable for as long as possible, as long as you guys want to be here. So I just, again, want to reiterate that to you all. Come on. There we go. Uh, some, some projects that we just completed this year, um, what we call the SNS building, the round building with the seven hangars in the far southeast corner. Um, we just redid all the ramp around that area. There was also a grass area that was out front where they parked where it's done and where they parked the Cirruses. That's all paved over now. Um, so there's been a lot of improvements down in that corner. You'll still have the, um, the twin ramp for your use, so that's fine and that's, that, that's in good standing. Um, but we just completed that project. Um, Ten new tea hangers up on the north side of the airport. We just completed that as well. Um, we have, I believe, almost 40 people on the waiting list. And a lot of airplanes that want to be here in this airport, but we just completed that. And um, they will be usable here shortly. Um, I know this is probably a little bit more difficult to see and understand, but what you're looking at here is the approach end of uh, runway 27. So if you're driving around the east side of the airport around 27 on our perimeter road, you'll see we took out about 15 acres of trees there. If anybody's noticed or had videos, I know Miguel stands out there. Um, one year, F-22 was coming over the top and the trees went like this because they were really close. Those trees are gone now, so we feel comfortable. Right now. So when you drive around there and you're like, this looks totally different, it does because we took all the trees out. And for my wildlife and my, my environmental friends, we are mitigating for the wetland impact. So just answer that question. 
Um, some other improvements that we did this year, the FEMA, or what we call the FEMA Warbird Ramp. Uh, when FEMA was here after Irma, they dropped a bunch of trailers. Obviously, they used our facility. They're, the legs on the trailers poke divots in our nice ramp out there that we just reconstructed a couple years ago. So we went out there, they gave us $1.1 million to rehab a lot of that. And also the taxiway that runs along the, uh, where the Warbird building is all that, we repaved all of that. So we've got some nice pavement out there um, for y'all to use during the event. What you're looking at here, I know it's a little bit hard to see, but this is the approach end of Runway 9, and this is up on the north side of the airport. So I know I've been talking over the last several years about our MRO air cargo development. MRO is maintenance, repair, and overhaul. Um, but we started this project on November 5th, took, took out a lot of trees, it's about 40 acres. Um, we'll be done, we're, right now we're putting all the infrastructure, all the pavement, all the storm water to get the sites pad ready for some large facilities to be built there up on the uh, north side of the airport. I will tell you, a big component of this and our ability to draw companies to come in and locate on this site is because of this organization and what we are creating with our young people. So again, it all ties together for what we're doing here. But this is a, a big development for us. This is a taxiway hotel, so up by our T-hangers, um, the Lehigh hangers, up on the north side of the airport. Um, we are getting ready to start rehabbing the taxiway hotel. Um, we're actually going to start this Monday. It's actually broken up into four phases. We're only going to start, we're going to do phase one, see how far we get before we get into phase two, because um, we want to make sure this is available for the FAA to move aircraft around up on the north side of the airport. Um, but this will be getting ready to start next week. Post on and fun, what you're looking at here is the uh, blue roof building, that's the terminal. Um, we're going to reconstruct the terminal apron on the north side and that will start post on and fun because during the event, Blue Angels will be up there as well as some of the TAC demo teams. Um, but we will start that project after some of um, Probably some people won't like me for this, um, but what you're looking at here, this is a 59,000 square foot hangar um, that's being built in the far southeast corner over there in Chopper Town. Um, so this is actually, they just started pushing dirt this week, uh, but this will be completed, I believe, sometime late this summer, early fall. Uh, there's two golf streams that are going to be based in here and some other jets as well. Uh, but that's, that construction is occurring as we speak. Uh, two more things real quick. Um, our projects that we're going to be working on for the next several years is we are moving forward with an environmental assessment for the extension of runway 927. So off the, the approach end of runway 9, pushing 9 up to the west to take it to 10,100 feet. So there will be a lot of planning and things we need to move through to understand. Obviously we have GA camping out there. Um, other things we're going to have to address, but obviously it's in the forefront. We understand there are going to be impacts, but we are going to mitigate for those so you still have places to park airplanes and, and do what needs to be done. But we are going to get started with that process that will take several years for us. Last one, uh, but also for this year, we're going to design the rehab of Alpha Baba Charlie and Northeast Quad um, to rehab those taxiways. Um, and, but we won't start construction until the following year. But I believe that's it for me. Again, if y'all have any questions, any concerns, I'm always available. Shoot me an email. Um, Lights has my cell phone. I use the number that's on my card, not the one I give him because I tend to change that so he can't give me. <laughs> talk to you about, you know, obviously mowing and other security things here for the airport, but we appreciate you guys, we love you, we appreciate all your time you put in this event, and thank you very much. Alright guys, so uh, we're going to go through some of the important dates that you guys uh, need to know in order to get prepped for this year's flying. So the first one, everyone's most important one, is when is the final mow going to be done on the airport? Right now we have that scheduled for Wednesday, March 27th, and we are going to continue to mow all aircraft parking areas at 3 inches. Um, we are going to work from the east to the west, so Chopper Town all the way over to General Aircraft Camping. If you need any additional mowing or you have any additional concerns, please get with Tim Wells, the site director. He'll coordinate directly with our maintenance supervisor, Craig Stewart, so we can get those issues addressed. Um, now on to credentialing and badges. So regular badges will be issued to all yearly birds and employees only who need them. Uh, event badges will be issued to volunteers operating inside the aircraft operations area Monday, March 18th. 
through Thursday, March 28th, and also from Tuesday, April 9th through Monday, April 22nd. Temporary AOA badges will be issued to FAA, uh, Tech Ops, and Air Traffic Control. And then anyone needing access through Post 500, which is on the East Access Road, um, those will be limited to only FAA and military support volunteers only. And then airport badges will not be required from Friday, March 29th until Monday, April 8th. And I know that's a lot of information. We have handouts for you um, over here in the corner at the end of everyone's presentations. Um, event badges, so how do you get one? Uh, they're going to be issued by the airport badging office. You must fill out a regular airport security access application. All your applications have to be approved and signed by Laura Vaughn or Tim Wells. Um, and also, we're going to be trying to limit how many badges we issue this year, so we're going to be working closely with the Sun and Fun staff to determine who, who really needs one. Um, make sure you provide us two forms of ID that includes a driver's license and one of either a passport, birth certificate, or a social security card. And anyone who's issued one of those cards can escort up to 15 people. Um, all temporary badges uh, must be returned to the airport badging office no later than Thursday, <coughs> April 11th. And then I just encourage all chairmen and volunteers, please work with each other and coordinate to try and limit those as much as you can. Change condition dates. So runway 523 and 826 will be closed starting Friday, March 22nd until 4 p.m. on Thursday, April 11th. All the southern taxiways will be non-movement at the exact same time. Camping will be authorized on the AOA starting Friday, March 29th until 5 p.m. on Monday, April 8th. So everyone, please make sure your volunteers know they have to be off the airfield by 5 p.m. on Monday, April 8th. The airport will be closed nightly from 7.30 p.m. until 6 a.m. starting Sunday the 31st until Monday the 8th. And then again, airport badges are not required Friday the 29th until Monday the 8th. Uh, convention procedures, airfield setup and installation. So just a reminder, no permanent installations unless approved by the uh, airport. The call airport operations, if you have any questions, our number is on every gate. It's 863-834-4911. It's also on the back of everyone's badges when you're issued one. Clearance requirements this year. So we need 300 feet away from the VOR, 35 feet away from the AWAS towers on the northeast corner of the Warburg ramp. We need 40 feet from edge of pavement, that's a change this year. Uh, last year it was 35 feet, this year it's 40 feet from all edges of pavement. Except for Taxway Bravo, we need 60 feet, and that's only north of uh, Bravo 3, so we can get the C-17s, KC-135s in there. Contractor volunteer briefings, we're gonna, those seemed very successful last year, we're gonna continue to have those, those are gonna be to be announced. So if you have any new volunteers, any new contractors working on your site, We'll post those through the chairman website and they can come in and get some additional training from the airport on some of the procedures and how to operate on the field. And then again, handouts will be available after the meeting over here in the corner. All right, uh, I'm not sure who's next, but it's campus improvement, so I'll turn it back to Lights. <laughs>
out in the core area. If you were here last weekend, you saw 168 barbecue competitors, including the number one barbecue champion in the world, all competing for the Florida State Barbecue Championship. They filled this place with so much barbecue that we had probably a thousand plus buzzers on Sunday. <laughs> When, the, when they talked about, when Gene was telling you that they ground up the Warburg ramp, the end result was, we got the millings. Those are awesome. It's making paved areas that we can drive on regularly without worrying about the mud sludge we got going on in some areas right now. But it paves some of our roads. We also were able to pave um, the Sun and Fun Boulevard because of the FEMA issue. So it's all brand new. And Bill Boxman, one of our board members, We'll be, in the next two weeks, we'll be paving new pavement on Voyager Path, which is the main entranceway. It'll be widened, and it'll look like an entry to Disney again. So it's great improvements all the way around. Fences. All right, I know there's a lot of controversy about a wall on our southern border. So it really doesn't matter to us right now. What it does matter to us is we're all one team. So early birds and Camp Duffy, all are one team. We're all in this together. So the wall came down. That's a good thing. It's a good thing. It really is. Oh, by the way, there's a phenomenally impressive first class commercial laundry facility out there now. Early birds, y'all enjoying that? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, that's for everybody. It's a good thing. Yep. The Sunset Grill got repainted because all the events we're doing, we're doing in there. Sesta building looked like a scene out of Jumanji. So we cleaned that up and it's now a classy looking place. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to my sidekick in crime here, the guy, the master of disaster, the, uh, the guy you all love to hate, <laughs> Gigi Grant Gibson. Talk about, first of all, the, 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 the pig fest obviously was this past weekend. Lights mentioned the thousand other shows. Somebody said, Why are those buzzers out there? I said, I don't know. The volunteer briefing not this weekend. <laughs> and see, this is a very uh, uh, kind of a topic that we go through every day. Our non movement area, which is everything south of taxiways, Delta, and Papa. Um, we want to make sure that we keep those areas um, as organized as we can. So traffic movements, a lot of that stuff we covered last time, there's really no changes there. NOAA, we did have a couple of issues last year, and I want to reiterate to everyone that that hangar is a no-entry area. If you do not have specific authorization to be in that hangar, please do not go. It's a, uh, it's a problem. So they're very kind and gracious to us. We've got a great relationship there. They had a couple of folks wandering in, a couple of people actually placed their aircraft in there. That is a definite no. That is a United States government facility, and you're on your own when that happens, because we can't help you this time. Um, you've been warned. Uh, Draken, what a you know, fantastic partner here on the field. They are probably one of the most uh, interesting organizations. You've got to have a chance to look them up there, and, and basically an adversary company. Not like I am, but a company that actually goes out and engages our own United States military in flight training operations against our current pilots. So they're training them. It's the largest private air force in the world. And uh, you can expect them to be moving around down there pre show. So when you're out there setting things up, make sure that if you start hearing jet noise, that you're looking and paying attention because it's probably coming you know, pretty close by. Uh, flight training is also still going to be moving to pre-show out there. Remember, it's a non-movement area. Once, the air, once they turn the airport over to us on the 22nd, then that area goes non-movement. It's not in control of the tower. So make sure that you're out there watching, because they may or may not be watching for you. Uh, we don't have any communications set up for them you know, until just prior to the show. So if they're out there moving around, make sure that you and they do not have an encounter that neither of you wants to repeat. Um, the new apron that was uh, recently completed out in front of the flight school area down there where tailwheels used to be in the old Piper building, that area down there, that is for the exclusive use of the tenants. We are not going to be able to expand into that. Everything that we have had previously is still available. All of that new apron, though, is dedicated for the tenants that pay to be here year-round. So please make sure that we don't encroach that and you know, have, have them have a bad experience. I know this same thing we say every year, everyone has a red flag. The red flag is stop. If you see something that looks unsafe, 
you need to stop it right then. Make sure that you get somebody's attention, shut everything down, get everybody you know, organized so that we can start working on the problem. But make sure that everything stops so that people can get out of harm's way. We'll make sure we keep it a safe event. All right. I want to make a statement about home-built aircraft. Home-built aircraft, the Experimental Aircraft Association, and the home builders, are why Sun and Fun is here. You need to know that we know that and that it's important to us. If we didn't have all of that, we wouldn't be having this fine conversation right now. Home built over the years because of different restrictions and the way that we have to operate has had less and less of a, of a good experience. We want to make sure that we change that. They've not had access to their aircraft, and one of the main things they want to do is go out and show people those aircraft. We chase them away for six hours a day, that's not going to go that well for what they want to come and do. So our audience has, has dwindled in that area. As well as we're doing, and as fine as we're doing, and a lot of other things, that one has suffered. So this past year, Linda and her team asked to be moved and relocated, and we're going to do that for this year. Now, I kind of tried to simplify what we're looking at over the next several years. And for those of you who can't quite figure out the next alphabet suit that I'm going to show you, this one kind of dumbs it down. Show planes, and that big rectangle in the middle there, and every other plane. So it's trying to make it simple. If they brought it to show it and be appreciated by other people in a showcase setting, that's what the show planes area is for. If they flew it in here to look at those other planes, that's every other plane. All right, we have a lot of resources and access across the, uh, the airport to be able to take advantage of that. So, what does it look like for 2019? General aviation parking is basically going to stay very similar to what it's been, and this is not an all-inclusive design. Those of you that want to measure this down to the millimeter, you go right ahead, I'm going to keep working. But this out here where it says general aviation parking, you notice that now we've annexed the old home built area into general aviation parking as well. The intent for that area will be day trippers, people that want to come and go, because the restrictions on them are the same as were on the previous occupants, which was home built. You can't go out there and just stand and watch the airplanes fly. You have to come out of there. So the, the terms are the same, but we feel like the audience is going to be better because they came to watch all that stuff somewhere else anyway. So we're trying to put things where they have the, the, the right, you know, the right purpose or the right place. Home built is going to move into this general area down here in the middle, which was this past year occupied, or actually many years past, occupied by a seaplane. Now this is a two-move process. So more to come on what 2020 is going to look like, but for this year, home built is going to occupy the corner of Echo and Echo One, and seaplane will occupy the area south of that. These are all still in production. I'm waiting for final resolution from both of those areas to make sure that everybody's aircraft can get in and out safely and that there's you know, plenty of room. But that's the case. Now notice where seaplane is, that's uh, obviously where the yellow lot used to be. We will show you by the second of March where the yellow lot is going to be. It will be in a place that you will have at least as good access as you had before. And the trick is, it's gonna have the right transportation to get you to and from it hopefully more efficiently. That's the whole idea. We're trying to run this crazy idea of putting cars in parking lots, campers and campgrounds and airplanes on the airport. So um, more to come on that. But yes, it is a bit of a change. I'd like you to work with us. This is something that's been heavily discussed with the airport and all of the areas involved. And once we can get all of that established, we can start working on infrastructure. Back to the previous slide. That area right there is where the airport and we are working on making sure that we keep you know, protected so that those show planes can be shown and then there's potential for infrastructure that can be put in there along with ground improvement things like that as the airport goes to their published development plan which we are partnering with and have a meeting on today. So there's a lot of things happening and it's a lot more than six months, Harley. Uh, literally almost every day of the year I'm speaking to one of these fine folks over here on this side one way or the other and they're great partners, we're completely informed about everything that they've got going on and they of us, and it's, uh, it's a great partnership, and we really appreciate it. All right, uh, Warbird is gonna remain, Warbird ramp will remain static. Uh, we really enjoyed that over the last couple of years, still ironing out a couple of things that are um, you know, mechanical, but we're starting to really get that under control. Active Warbirds are gonna be operated this year off of the 523 
pavement or the grass in between Bravo and 523. There's just too much congestion on the Warbird ramp to try to do that. We had a couple of tries at it. It didn't really work that well. There may be some isolated startups on the Warbird ramp, but they will be that. There won't be any mass influx or, or, or uh, I almost said reflux. Um, anyway, um, parking, uh, no vehicles on the ramp again. It's golf carts. Um, it will allow the scooters, although I like to make fun of them. And the uh, golf carts are okay. There's no cars, no cars, no transient traffic, no parking out there on the Warburg ramp. Help us police that as well. It's dangerous. If people aren't watching, especially the ones that are sitting there with their head down texting. Um, I'm talking about the drivers and the pedestrians, so it's just not good. Uh, the Warburg building, please do not park next to that building or next to the performer tent. That road that goes, or the, uh, the taxiway, Delta 1 there, just to the east of the performer tent. That grass that's in the area right there, please don't park there. There's a lot of things that, are, that cause problems with that. Now, I know we have meetings, and we have guys, I'm just talking about don't leave your vehicle there all day. All right, that's considered the war road ramp, don't go there. There's places out in front for you to park, we'll have a diagram for that later. All right, tram courtesy, same thing. Don't pass the trams, wait for the trams. When you see the trams, they're doing us a service, you a service. I know it's hard to sit behind one when they're moving at the speed of smell, but let's try to give them the respect and courtesy that we would want. And don't cause them a problem, have them slam on the brakes and send people over the, over the front seat. All right, this is going to be tough to see. This is the Warbird uh, rent layout. You know something that's conspicuously missing up here in the corner is the ERT area that's been there in the past. They're going to be moving most of their operations to the north side of the field. So that gave us a little bit of extra room to work with, and we're still working out the exact um, opportunity that that presents. But for us here, air operations, um, smoke oil guys, air side ground safety, you're basically in the same general area you've been you know, previously, no change there. Uh, Civil Air Patrol, we're probably going to look at moving you guys up to that area. You've got a lot of space to keep work from. You keep your, that's a lot of places of uh, congestion points where your cadets are going to need to be working. Um, south side of the ramp, just some some upkeep. Uh, we are very fortunate this year to have Lewis Air Legends returning with this year four aircraft. Um, they had a great time last year, and it was reported to me that we were the very first selection for their tour this year, so pretty proud of that. That's a, that's a big compliment, and it's a compliment to you guys, especially Airside and Air Operations, for taking such good care of it, because they said ours was the best show that they had in 2018. So those of you who are not familiar, that's Glacier Girl, that's the A-20 Havoc, that's the B-25 rushing to get you, and this year they're also bringing in a Tiger Cat. So it's going to be a really, really cool outing, and Rod Lewis has become a very good supporter of us. And we're very patient with that. Um, more to come on this, but just want to give you kind of what we're looking at. Um, the last thing, our, our pre-flight stage, the big hit last year, it's going to move a little bit. It won't be up in our viewing area, so we need to watch any kind of transiting. It's going to be going off the northwest corner of the um, More to cover in our, in our ops meeting about specific aircraft movements. I did a little Photoshop work. I do have this available if you guys want to see it. This is what 2019 should look like with a real picture. So, kind of cool. Um, a couple of things you have to let, let to tweak yet. This is the 2018 ramp with basically what I hope is the new configuration of tents around it. <coughs> Alright, air show schedule. Get your camera out. Fields open at 0700 daily, field closed at 1930 daily, air show ends at 1730 daily. That's 530 for those who don't keep up with the 24 hour time. Air show start times. These are a little different this year. We had a lot of military interest. We're still working out their final schedules in order to make sure that what we do matches the waiver. Steve? Um, we have uh, start times at 130 on Tuesday and Wednesday. Night show will be normal at 730. On Wednesday, Thursday at noon is the Blues arrival. We will be clearing the campground for that arrival. That has to happen. All right. So just sorry, that's the way it is. Two hours are going to go around and make a lot of noise. The actual air show itself will begin at, at uh, two o'clock and will continue until 5:30. Uh, Blue Angels will be doing a full practice during that time. Friday at one o'clock, Saturday at one o'clock, night show at seven thirty, and then Sunday one o'clock again. So shows are a little bit longer, but for all the right reasons, we've got some really good engagement from the military and a couple of hopefully some fun to share with you um, in our next meeting. Highlights again: the Angels, Taylor Legacy is already committed, so we'll be seeing those in coordination with Jim Tobel's Corsair. Um, it's we're still up in the air on which Navy aircraft are going to be coming. Uh, several uh, could be as many as three. 
Uh, Kavanaugh, Vietnam Sergeant, if you guys have not seen this, this is incredible. This is like Tora 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 except for Vietnam. He's a lost pilot, it's very dramatic. They're going in trying to save him. He's on the ground being shot at, there's stuff blowing up everywhere. Then they come in and rescue the guy under a hail of fire. They run out of there, stuff's blowing up all over the place, it's going to be great. Um, we are talking about making sure we protect the airport ground with all that pirate Chris. <laughs> <You're welcome. laughs> <laughs> I wondered about that. Wipe it, take care of it. That's <laughs> what happens when you use last year's slides. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, single ship tack demo pilot um, in history is going to be here at Sun Fire. Even though he can't think, I'm not she was about that tall. It's uh, <laughs> It's kind of wild to see that girl up there flying around. She does a great job. She's going to be talking to our kids. She's in the lower picture there. Uh, HM demo is still up in the air. We're looking at that possibly happening for us. And it, those get, it, it occurred to me as some people came, they didn't really understand what we were doing with our pre-flight show and with the actual production through Live Air Show TV. So I'm going to run a quick video. You guys can see what the production looks like and the type of elements that appear in it. This is about a, just a couple minutes. Okay. Assuming it plays. It didn't practice. <laughs> here with Live Air Show TV, the pre-flight show. It's exactly what it says. A little bit later today. I, I have to tell you, I've seen Sun and Fun grow and now the contribution that you're making to the next generation of aviators makes me proud to be here. And so when you see this, this program being built to help kids and high schoolers accomplish their dreams, it's really amazing what they can do. They come to Sun and Fun and and all the other events to see what they do to make it possible. My favorite part was watching the very students, our future aviators and maintainers, bring in some kids to come through the 727 Learning Lab. Well, you know what? It's amazing. We're very fortunate to have this opportunity here at Southern International Flying Expo. The fundraiser for your educational programs like this, this sort of thing happens 52 weeks out of the year. Right? So we're so thankful to all of those sponsors, supporters, and volunteers for making it happen. What do you think? That's how they see Sun and Fun. 
So congratulations, it was a great coup. We're going to be doing it again this year. And uh, it produced all of that, and it taken us in a whole new realm of how we approach sponsorship. You know, we have all these impressions of digital marketing metrics that we can go out to now and get more attention and more focus on this airport and on this event and on the service that we provide to the airspace community. So with that, I've got just one more last little thing here. It's something new and something we've been uh, wanting to get here for a little while. And I'll just let the video run. You can figure out what it is. This will be for our night show on Wednesday and Saturday night. One of the things that this company is proposing to us is that they literally are going to, they showed me a design yesterday, I had a chance to get it in the slide, but uh, actually a Blue Angels pilot will come walking through the sky and then stop and then morph into a Blue Angels jet that takes off. I mean, these guys have got some unreal concepts that they're putting together. Uh, some of us saw it at Oshkosh and was like, well, it's really impressive that they're up there. Um, they put together a whole new thing now. And, and Gene, I'll show you the demo real quick. It's pretty cool. They, they learned a lot. So we're pretty excited. This will be happening on uh, on, on uh, Wednesday, like I said, Wednesday and Sunday night. They're going to integrate with our kids, you know, the drone programs that we have, and there's going to be a lot of this coming. So I'm really excited. We're finally going to start getting into the UAS and UAV space um, the way that we are supposed to. I did hear from our FAA friends this morning that this is not going to be a problem. So uh, we're pretty happy about it. So anyway, some neat stuff. Uh, we're looking at between 50 and 70 drones that are going to be part of this uh, demonstration. And uh, we're looking for some big things. We already have several sponsors that are very interested in, in being represented through this. So I'm going to stop that. Uh, sponsorship. Guys, you can work on sponsors for your area. We just need to work together. There's a process. Some of you have done a fantastic job with this. I want to call out to a military hospitality boss. Um, you guys have done a phenomenal job of literally just self-financing. It is fantastic. Coordination is the key so we make sure we recognize everybody properly. We don't overstep and make people get asked and things like that. Um, we definitely organize the workflow over this now. And I know that years ago people told you, hey, don't sell any sponsorship. Let Sunfund handle it. That's not the case anymore. you got 3,500 salespeople out there. Why the heck would we shut you off? So, but there is coordination that has to take place. If you're going to make an ask of a specific entity, we just need to know so that it's coordinated. And we can probably up the ante for you some, too, by allowing you to leverage other assets around the event beyond your own. So keep that in mind. The auto branch is there. We just need to communicate on making sure that all works like it should. Um, aircraft judging is another place. Dale's still his team. Got a concrete pad last year. Um, so they put the tent on it. This year, pole barn's going up. Aircraft judging is going to have a whole new home. Very, very methodical, very, very well planned and executed. And if you want to know how it's done, go talk to those guys. Um, anytime we're doing things twice with some of our, uh, of our sponsors, it just doesn't look good. So that's all I got. Thank you very much. I am actually very humbled to be part of this organization and to serve you guys. That's truly how I look at it. And uh, we're looking forward to a great 2019. Thank you very much.
So I am possibly looking for a couple of volunteers that are on the field that can help us uh, receive the golf carts and check them in. So if you have uh, the ability to help with that, I have one individual that may be helping, but he's had a little bit of a health issue, so I don't know how that's going to impact that. But um, so if you're interested in helping us get the golf carts checked in, please see me or come and see Matt um, Anderson, who uh, I'm actually going to introduce here in just a second. Um, but we, we do need some help with that process. The tent equipment deadline is February the 15th. That means that if you're ordering a tent, you need to change the size or you want to add a floor or if you want to do this or have a ramp, all of that needs to be on your equipment list by February the 15th. After that point in time, no changes will be processed. Um, the Lafayette Tent Company will be loading their truck and coming south. February the 15th is the day. So please don't go call me or email me afterwards and go, oh, I need to change because we just can't do it. They've got to get their truck loaded from up in Indiana and come south. So, um, so Matt, come forward. <laughs> So Matt is new to our staff. Uh, you met him earlier when we were all up on stage. But Matt, uh, in, in, a, in addition to what he does on a year-round uh, basis with our facility rentals, Matt is going to be overseeing the, uh, the tent operation and also helping Jeff Sager with the golf carts if there's any issues with golf carts once they're on the field. Um, he's also going to be helping me get all of the reports and everything once all of the equipment is approved. So, Matt, this is the gang. Gang, this is Matt. Um, so, um, I will be sending out this contact information to all of you. There's a few business cards over on the side, but he's going to be my new best friend, and I hope he's going to be your new best friend as well. So, um, I don't think he knows what he's got himself into. <laughs> um, I'm looking forward to working with him. So, uh, the website. Uh, Robin has asked me to mention for you guys that need help in your areas to please post your job needs on the website. If, um, if that's too taxing for you, at least email Robin and let her know that you need help. Now, the other part of that is if Robin sends you someone that wants to work in your particular area, call them. See if they want to volunteer in your area. If they don't, the next thing that you do is that you send that person back to Robin because we cannot have potential volunteers out there dangling, wondering, wonder, what happened? I wanted to volunteer at Sun and Fun and nobody wants me. So let Robin find a home for them. We're one big happy family and they want to be part of that family. So um, please, if you can't use a volunteer, please make sure that Robin understands that so we can place them. Okay, volunteer camping is the crux of my existence. <laughs> okay, volunteer camping starts March the 2nd. That's the same day as the next meeting. If you are planning to bring your rig in to place it or to mark off your spot, you must have a permit. To make that process easier, please go to the volunteer page on the Sun and Fun website, not, not I'm going to call it Charlie's World, but not the Sun and Fun VOL website, but the main Sun and Fun website, and fill out the volunteer early camping permit request. That way, we will get your request, and Becky can get your permit uh, filled out early. Now, the one thing that you have to do is you have to make sure that your chairman has also requested camping for you, because we go in and verify that camping has been requested before we fill out your permit. So coordination is with your chairman is absolutely necessary with that. So check with your chairman. Fill out the form, and then come and see us on March the 2nd. Okay, previous year's t-shirts. We still have a bit of an inventory over there, but um, we still have some assorted sizes, Bonnie? Uh, yes. Okay, so $2, if you 
need t-shirts, please go see Bonnie. Um, and Melissa, it looks like Melissa's helping too. So um, anyway, we want to get rid of those and then we may have some additional t-shirts um, at next meeting. The, uh, okay, something new. Uh, of course, y'all are very familiar with the Tail Dragger Party. We are actually adding something to um, the event this year. We're going to have a clear prop flight, that should say fly-in briefing and not flight briefing. Um, on Sunday night prior to the event, Tracy came up with a great idea that, you know, we share a lot of information at these meetings, but basically it's a small group compared to the 3,500 volunteers that help us. And we want to open this up and be able to the, the guys that the boots on the ground once they're on the field here, that they have an opportunity to come um, and share in this information and a little bit of camaraderie before we get started. So we're calling this the Clear Prop Fly, uh, fly In Briefing, and it's going to be held on Sunday, Sunday night, and I don't know the time yet. There will be um, the same form that you have used to sign up for your tail dragger tickets. You will be telling me on that same form how many people you think will be coming to the um, clear prop event. So that's something hopefully our volunteers will get a little bit um, more knowledge that they can share not only with their fellow volunteers, but our guests as well. <coughs> New chairman orientation. I put an email out about this to the chairman earlier or a week or so ago. It's going to be in the ICOF room. Um, probably after we eat, um, and I expect it to go on about an hour, depending on who shows up. This is going to be me kind of helping people through their questions, showing them where to go on the website, what to do, um, and just general information. So it's, it's called the new chairman orientation, but anyone can attend if they want to ask questions and kind of learn a little bit more about the process. The ICOF room is upstairs in this building right here, so, and that'll be right after this meeting. Lunch is going to be here at some point. It's not arrived yet, but the, um, the ladies will be delivering it soon, hopefully. So you don't have to go to the Sunset Grill. Oh, I don't know. Did y'all notice my little groundhog right here popping up? <laughs> Happy Groundhog Day. Um, He's okay. side shadow. We've got 12 more months of summer. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so um, new chairman, um, I actually made a mistake and left one off of this list because we've been working with them almost all year. We have a new security chairman this year, but these are some of the, um, the new chairmen that have agreed to take on new roles for us this year. I will be putting this PowerPoint on the website so you will be able to view it. I know a lot of you probably can't see from way back there. But we have uh, our new chairman of the board, Harley Richards. Catherine Spain will be chairing our 45th birthday bash. Margaret Ann Wheeler will be not doing 927 parking. Uh, <laughs> um, Ed Young, he is multi-talented because he is going to be overseeing the museum, the career fair, and the drone zone. So he's going to be a busy guy. Um, Airside uh, Ground Ops, we have a new chairman. We lost our great friend, Ron Moretto. Um, a month or so ago, and uh, we've had a wonderful gentleman by the name of Wayne Harris step into that role. So we're very excited about that. We have a new um, assistant principal over at the Central Florida Aerospace Academy. Her name is Tammy Epperson. She could not be here today, um, but very nice lady. Gary Gunn, who gave us our, our um, devotion this morning, uh, is our new chaplain. And Tom Ruhlman will be handling the ham radio, Larry Sullivan, mobile registration, Linda Chasse, preferred air show seating, Sam Lyons will be over the QB operation, yes that's Sam Lyons, the artist, uh, John Drago will all be overseeing our type clubs operation. We uh, still have some chairman areas that we need help in, exhibitor lot parking team, this is something that we've needed for a long time. We need a group of people that can help park cars, not handle the passes, but to actually put cars where they need to park um, in that lot. We've been having some real issues over there. Homebuilt camping chairman, transportation team for the volunteer parking area, volunteer ice and water, and smoking area. So if you've got anybody you think might be interested in any of these particular jobs, please contact me so I can reach out to them. I would appreciate it. The deadline for the sign shop is 
Thursday, March the 14th. I don't know if that's supposed to be Friday, but anyway, March the 14th is the deadline. Um, so, and the sign shop will be open for a time period today. Um, so if you have any sign requests that you would like to drop off, they will, um, he will be um, in the building. And I think that might be it. Any, um, anything that y'all need, I'm going to be upstairs. You can certainly come up there, ask questions. It'll be a big party. Thank you guys. I'm looking forward to working with you this year. Thank you, Laura. She is iconic around here for sure. She's the glue that holds us all together, let there be no doubt about it. And uh, she goes as an unsung hero sometimes. But to help her, I hope you captured that Matt is taking on a Herculean responsibility. So what I'm going to ask you all is to repeat it here, is that you don't go see Laura when you don't get your golf cart. If your tent's in the wrong place, you don't go see Laura. Matt's the man. If you've got an issue, he's the guy. And the reason we put the 15th of February up there as a deadline to get your tent, table, chairs, flooring requests in, it's very simple. The trucks leave Lafayette, Louisiana about a week later. Indiana. 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 What did I say, Illinois? Louisiana. 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 No, Lafayette. Yeah, thank you. Y'all are paying attention. That's freaking incredible. All right. So, yeah, Lafayette, Indiana, they leave a week later, and they start putting them up on the 1st of March. So we don't really have a lot of wiggle room. We're going to the last second. So please make sure it's right. And then if you've got any issues, Matt will be working directly with their team leader, uh, Rich or Scott, whichever one it is, and we'll sort it out. But if you don't get it in, it's too late after the, fifth, the 16th of February. All right. So a couple of things you need to know. You probably didn't know. When Greg showed you that video up there, that's really cool. What's really cool about that, even more so, is that as a component of what we do now, and it's called missionizing your air show for STEM education. Because we've been so successful at it, because of all the work that we've done here, that, for the first time ever, was recognized at the International Council of Air Shows from all around the world as one of the only four recipients of the Pinnacle Award for innovation in missionizing your air show. Thank you, Craig Gibson. Ticket sales, they're through the roof. We're exceeding all previous year's records for this time in relation to the show start date for sales of tickets and exhibit vendors. We've never seen numbers like this before, so Tracy's ecstatic, Bonnie's ecstatic, we're all thrilled. But what we're doing is good. So the image is out there that you gotta come to Sun and Fun to start your aviation year, and it's working. Um, improvements. We did a lot of improvements. I hope you did take notice of the canopy of trees coming up. You saw what used to be a forest between Southeast Exhibits and the main core area. It's all cleaned up. You can see all the way through to all the, all the clubhouses. That's the work of Tim Wells and his maintenance crew going around the whole facility and continue to beautify our image out here to look like we still live here and it wasn't taken over by the jungle. So that's a great job. But improvements to your facilities, everything where you work, you have an option here. You can wait for something to happen or you can make something happen. I'll give you an example. The judges area. They wanted a concrete pad and they wanted a pole barn with a side on it, some siding on it. What did they do? They went out and raised the money. We helped them. We gave them some advice. They worked. They went to a sponsor, got money, and now it's being built. Vintage. Vintage wanted a pad and a pole barn. They went and raised most of the money. We helped the rest of it. We combined it with some other events and got the price down and got it done. You can too. Go find help. Let us know. We'll help you find that sponsor, that donor, and get whatever you want built, built out there. So it's a team effort. We appreciate that. Honor flight. Gary Clark. Where's Gary? He was here a minute ago. I saw There's Gary. Normally we have honor flight in the middle of the week on Wednesday. Due to the airline logistics, it's going to be pushed back to the end of April. Is that right, Gary? That's right. So if you want to help with, uh, April, uh, with honor flight, it won't be during the event. It'll be during the end of the month. But Gary's the guy to go see if you want to be one of the folks that help them get those great veterans to Washington and back. 83. What's 83? 
We have now produced 83 teenage pilots. We lead the world. Okay? It's nothing short of a small miracle. It's a, a lot of work on a lot of people's part. It starts with the fly-in, and then it ends with people like Ed and Rochelle who deal with doing interviews with them, picking the right student, mentoring them, and getting them all the way to be done. We will be doing three to four new teenage pilots every month. Every month. And we just opened it up in the state of Florida. We're doing a beta test. We picked six EAA chapters, 99 chapters, women in aviation chapters, and they are selecting a student in their location between the age of 17 and 21 in school, and we're going to give them $10,000 to learn to fly. If that works, we'll probably triple that in 2020. So we are now leading the way. If you haven't noticed, AOPA and EAA are now following suit, and they're doing the same thing. We've been doing it for over five years, and we're getting better and faster at it every day because of the work we do here at the Flying. Lastly, but not leastly, seven years ago, Harley brought it up, after the fly-in, when I got here, I would spend two, three, four months taking hate mail and mean calls. Okay? It doesn't happen anymore. I don't get complaints. We don't get the, why'd you do that, or why'd you do that, or why? No. I mean, there's legitimate uh, suggestions on how to do things better, and we appreciate that, we get those, but we don't get the hate mail anymore. That's you. That's your attitude. That's your leadership in the field. So now, because of the fact that we have done so well with the fly-in, people like coming here, recognition for a wonderful event, all the pilots we made, the Aerospace Center for Excellence, we had two major events happen within the last two weeks. And this is something you can hang your hat on and be proud of. We were invited on their dime to fly to Dallas, Texas and brief the leadership of Southwest Airlines on what we do so they could ask, what can they do to help us? We've never teamed with an airline before. This is a first. Yes, you're right. So Southwest Airlines is going to be a new partner. They're going to be involved in our career fair, which, by the way, is bigger and better than ever. Ed's got his hands full. That is now going to be a huge air-conditioned building, and it will have three days, and we've run out of space with people standing in line to be event, uh, exhibitors in there and look for new A&Ps and mechanics and engineers, as well as go to different schools. Second thing that happened, we, were, we had our first official visit by the leadership of the public organization to find out what they can do to help us. We've gotten sandwiches in the past. They put up a few, few things here and there, cookies, cakes, donuts. We've never had them as a true partner in our venture to build the Aerospace Center for Excellence. So with Southwest Airlines and Publix joining because of everything you do, validates that what we're doing is right. And now because we're giving out over 500,000 in scholarships annually, we lead the world. So thank y'all very much for that. And I'll open the question. Yes, sir. Flip Can AROP have this area for our, our presentation afterwards? Great. You go with that? The answer is yes. Any other questions? Com oh. Striping and fencing deadlines. Striping and fencing deadlines. Laura Vaughn. Oh yeah, if you haven't registered, please do so. We're trying to find out who came today so we can keep feeding you information. We don't want to miss anybody. So please, please, please vault, get your name and email over here so we can keep contact with you. What else? Anybody else have anything? A rumor that what's going to move? No, no sir. The announcer stand is right where it's at. Uh, we're not going to have to build scaffolding for the live air show TV, right, Greg? We're using lifts. Yeah, we're using lifts for the scaffolding for the big cameras for the uh, live air show. Announcer stand stays where it's at. Air boss stays where it's at. We're good. Yes.
contact me because maybe I don't know who you are. Most everybody has responded already. There might be somebody I wasn't aware of. Okay. Barbara Mann. Any other questions? Yes, ma'am. Oh, Medical Electric are on the website now, so you can sign up. You can get up, you can see where it's at and where to sign up. That's correct. All right. Okay. Last but not least, oh, Linda. Is the registration going to mean if you're Your airport team has decided to clean that whole area up. It'll be smooth, it won't be a jungle, and there'll be another road over there. And the traffic will go the way it's supposed to, according to Gene Conrad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, the road behind camp, camp of registration, because they can't use Kidron anymore. Kidron is closed, so Gene's going to make a road that'll go behind the camp of registration for exit, and entrance will be the same way it's always been. So it'll be one way each way. Sure enough, Rich. Just a friendly reminder, put your food order in. <laughs> put your Hey, you know, by the way, that's just one of the cost-saving things that made the food better. Rich and his team worked really hard to make great lunches, but we can only do that when you order the real number of lunches you need. Don't over-order, please. Then we can put all the other condiments and all the plus-ups in there. What else? Hey, before you walk out of here, these I know it says $5 on it. It's free. This is your story. This is what you've created. This is the Lakeland Aero Club, part of the Aerospace Center for Excellence. It's a story about bringing the Cub home, how a community came together, made donations, gave time and effort to bring Miss Bonnie, our, one of our J3s for the Aero Club, back from Wisconsin when it blew the engine. But we had it repaired, put back on, and spared back down here better than ever, all because of the work that we do. And the story's right in here. And guess who worked on the engine? 17 and 18 year old young men and women. They weren't a bunch of old guys like us. It was the kids of tomorrow, the next leaders in the aerospace industry are making this happen. So thank y'all. Read this and enjoy the fruits of your labor. All right, let's all have lunch, have fun. Thank y'all very much.